Hi friends, welcome to Moody Blooms. I'm Mary Ellen and today we are going to be discussing the cotyledon tomentosa or commonly known as the bear's paw succulent. Now these cute little chubby succulents have these adorable leaves that look like little bear's paws. Like all tomentose plants, its leaves, flowers, and stems are all covered with a down. This African native is a succulent shrublet with adorable velvety leaves. Heights can reach up to 12 to 16 inches with a diameter of 12 to 20 inches. They come in some variegated versions like this one and some non-variegated versions like this guy here. Its fuzzy leaves have a toothed edge highlighted in red. These teeth are arranged in a neat row and number anywhere from about two to 10. These chubby little ovate leaves truly resemble a bear's paw. Although the bear's paw can be pretty easy to grow, the leaves can be quite fragile. Therefore, knowing how to properly care for this beauty is key. They make lovely houseplants and can be grown outdoors year round in certain climates. And in colder climates, they can be brought in during colder months. Now let's discuss some care tips for this beauty. Cotyledon tomentosa watering is similar to most succulents. They love to have their roots soaked, but must be able to dry out. Thankfully, the bear's paw is one of the easiest to know when to water because of their cute chubby little leaves. Personally, I know when to water when the leaves start to look thin and limp. They even might be a little bit squishy and they tend to lose that plump look. Leaves may also begin to curl inward and the tops of the leaves get a little concave. Therefore, if the leaves are starting to look thin and limp and the soil is dry, it's definitely time to give it a good drink. However, if you're unsure if your bear's paw needs water, you can gently squeeze the leaves and they'll almost feel like, you know how celery gets when it's a little bit too rubbery and it's been in your fridge a little too long and you forgot about it? It's kind of that squishy rubbery feel that you know, you're not gonna eat, but you'll definitely throw it out. That's kind of the same feeling or similar to maybe like a gummy bear. And that's when you know that it needs some water. Leaves won't fall off at a slight touch unless they're being overwatered or unless you're manhandling them. If they are all firm, they do not need water. Typically for me, this is about anywhere from two weeks to a month and I'm in Southern California. And these babies can be outside all year round. Unless it's like a super heavy rain like we had last winter, then I'll bring them in or put them in my greenhouse. Another foolproof way of watering is to use a moisture meter. It's my favorite way to water. You literally just stick it in the soil and it'll tell you when it needs a drink. It's super easy to use, super inexpensive, and the link will be down below if you're interested in the one that I use. If grown in a container, bottom watering is highly recommended. I typically submerge about three fourths of the pot in water. I set a timer for an hour to let the plant soil soak up the water, 15 to 30 minutes for smaller pots. Golden plant rule number one, when in doubt, let it drought. Overwatering kills way more succulents than underwatering. Underwatering is much easier to solve in time. Also, avoid giving small amounts of water at a time. It needs a good deep soak. If standing water remains in the saucer or pot, make sure you dump it out after about five minutes or so. Now keep in mind that indoor plants will use less water than outdoor plants because they're getting less sun. Just make sure you keep them in an area where they won't be touched because they are prone to dropping if they're manhandled too much. Now, one way that I also love to water is to use fish tank water. If you have a fish tank or you have access to one, that's fresh water, of course, not salt water, because that might damage the plant, then it's a great source of water for your plants. In fact, the water from aquariums includes nitrates that are simple for the plants to assimilate. As the aquarium becomes dirtier, it becomes richer in nitrogen, potassium, and many other nutrients that are beneficial for your plants. Plants use these nitrates to produce green leafy branches, stimulating photosynthesis and producing food essential for healthy growth and development. I've also heard that diluted fish emulsion is also great for your plants. I personally haven't used it, but I've read really good things about it. So you may wanna give that a try as well. Indoors, the cotyledon tomentosa will love a bright spot where it will get about six hours of bright sunlight a day. A south facing window is ideal, but really any bright window will do. If you plan on moving your plant into direct sunlight, 
make sure you gradually acclimate it so that it doesn't get sunburned. Plants can actually sunburn just like humans. So they need a gradual increase into the sun. Outdoors, your bear's paw will love a location that has some great early morning sun. And then just make sure that if you have some really harsh afternoon light that you move it to the shade. Personally, my plant that I have here, the non-variegated version, is in direct sun from anywhere from about 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. and it's doing great. You can see it's flowering and it's, it's nice and healthy. In summer, make sure that you be careful of those harsh summer rays and it may need to go in some shade if you see it starting to wilt. And actually, I had this plant here, the variegated version, and I feel like these don't do as well in direct sun. I have to do a little bit more dappled direct sun with these variegated versions. And I had set this out to take some cuttings to give to my niece and I forgot about it and I left it in a really hot, bright spot and it just got fried. I mean, none of it survived. So I snipped off most of the tips and then it's growing back with these cute little babies. And as they grow larger, you'll start to see the, the teeth come in. When they come in, they're, they're nice and round, and then they start to develop the paw shape with the little toothed edges. Now, in full sun, the plants will develop a little bit more of a yellow tinge. As you can see, there's a little bit more yellow on the tops of these plants here. Indoors or in a less bright area, you'll see maybe some darker stems, and they'll actually lose some of that uh, red tip if it's in a, a darker spot. Now remember to gradually increase the light into direct sun. You don't want to burn the plant, but getting it that bright direct sun will stress the plant and it'll, you'll see some beautiful uh, colors on those tips. Leaves will re remain more green and the variegation will be less intense in shade. In deep shade, your plant will become etiolated or leggy and the space in between the stem and the leaf will be larger and I personally don't like the look of a super long leggy plant in fact this one is probably going to end up being a little bit leggy I may end up having to, to trim these off and then root the the stem just because I don't like the look of a really long stem but we'll see how they do now if your plant is stretching the succulent is searching for light a grow light may be a good idea if you can't get enough light indoors or even in your outdoor location inadequate light will not also give you a less desirable looking plant, but it also be a weaker plant. So you wanna make sure that it's getting plenty of bright sunlight. Now an ideal temperature should be anywhere from around 68 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 to 28 degrees Celsius, and that's ideal. Now of course they can take cooler or warmer temperatures, but that's the ideal temperature. Now it can tolerate temperatures as high as 100 degrees Fahrenheit or as low as 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Bear's Paw prefers bright, warm, sunny locations and dry climates. Cold hardy in USDA zones 9A to 11. Additionally, in colder months, do not put them too close to a window as they might get too cold. Also protect from frost to prevent scarring. In colder climates, your Bear's Paw should be brought indoors during the cooler months. A grow light may be needed in winter months to supplement your lighting as well. Now you'll know if it's in need of some light because you'll see that stretch look to your plant. Next, let's talk about the soil for your bear's paw. Now this plant needs a really well draining soil. And I'll show you something here because I picked this up, I don't know, maybe a week or two ago from a, a nursery that's local to me and it's it still hasn't dried out yet and it should be dried out if it's been you know, two weeks or so. And you can tell when the plant is getting overwatered by the leaves. This soil should definitely be more dry. I'm gonna go ahead and repot this up in a terracotta pot with some much better soil. That'll give it some really good drainage. A cacti and succulent soil works great, but I also add about almost 50% of perlite or pumice to the soil. And this really gets a good, well-draining soil. You can also throw in some orchid bark to help with drainage as well. When using standard potting mix, I will add like a, a 2 one, one ratio of potting soil, sand, and some pumice or perlite. You really wanna make sure the drainage is good because these plants really need to dry out. If the soil is too organic, it will retain too much water and increase your chance of root rot. As far as fertilizers go, lightly fertilize your bear's paw in spring and summer about twice a month. 
I like to use a succulent or cactus fertilizer and dilute to half strength. And of course, hold off on fertilizing in the winter months. In addition to the fish water that I mentioned earlier, the plant will also benefit from worm castings. Now you'll wanna repot your bear's paw about every two to three years. Now, when I bring home a bear's paw from a nursery, I repot it for three reasons. Number one, because it's much easier to repot when it's small and compact like this, and you'll lessen the chance of a lot of leaf drop. Another reason is because the soil that you get from those nurseries isn't that great a quality. It's a lot of times it's too dense for succulents, in my opinion. Most plants come in a peat-based compost and that stuff eventually starts repelling water. For example, the roots get wet unevenly and absorbing water becomes harder. I like to swap out the soil with a gritty inorganic mix. Third reason that I repot is I like using terracotta. It just is much better for succulents, especially bear's paw. Since terracotta is porous, it helps the soil dry out faster. In fact, it allows more airflow to the roots and tends to keep the roots drier. Also, definitely make sure that your pot has a drainage hole. This is a must for your bear's paw. Pruning your cotyledon tomentosa is a great way to help it grow more bushy and more full. I like to trim off any of the longer branches and this just encourages more growth. I'll probably cut off probably here. I'll probably propagate this section right here because I want it to grow more bushy. And I like the look of it better when it's more full, but it also keeps it more symmetrical, but also creates a stronger plant. Now, don't be afraid to prune your bear's paw. These are resilient plants and you're not gonna do any damage to the plant by trimming it. So it's super easy to do and then you can propagate those cuttings. So let's talk about propagation. Now, these generally are not great for leaf propagation. It can be done and I've had some propagate from leaves, but it's just not very reliable. The odds of them actually growing a baby on the leaf is actually pretty rare in my experience but they do great from cuttings. Just make sure that you use some clean shears and that after you make a cut that you let the ends of the cutting callus over for a few days before you put them into soil. And I wait a couple weeks to water because you wanna make sure that they have some roots before we're actually watering them. You can also propagate these in some water. Again, make sure the ends are calloused over before you set them in some water. Otherwise the ends will rot. Another tip is to not put the cuttings into direct sun because there's not a strong enough root system for it to handle the sun. It'll actually burn the leaves. So make sure that you keep it in uh, some bright light, but mostly in the shade. Now care for the variegated version of bear's paw is pretty much the same. The variegated version pretty much for any plants is a little bit slower than the non-variegated version. I just feel like the it can't take as much intense sun as the non-variegated version, so just keep that in mind. Let's review some of the bear's paw problems. The two most common problems are pests and overwatering. And anything like an aphid, a mealybug, um, scale, fungus gnats, and any types of those bugs are gonna be attracted to your cotyledon. Mealybugs are evil sap sucking insects and they show up as a waxy white insect. They secrete this sap that's a honeydew and it attracts ants and it can make the plants sticky and they're just awful, awful pests. And I mean, same thing with aphids and scale and also spider mites. Any of those plants can be treated with insecticidal soap. That's my favorite product to use to get rid of pests. But you can also use a rubbing alcohol, water, combo and I like to add one to two drops of Dawn dish soap, but that's also effective. I don't personally think it's quite as effective as using the insecticidal soap, but it's definitely better than nothing. Now, as far as fungus gnats, if you're getting those, it's definitely a overwatering problem. Of course, those little yellow sticky traps can be used for fungus gnats. My other two favorites for eradicating the fungus gnats are these two guys right here and they can be found on Amazon or at a local hardware store. The second main issue for bear paws is over watering. Now, again, like we discussed before, your paws will tell you when they need water. So if they're looking great and healthy and full, do not give them water. 
If your bear's paw succulent is getting too much water, or if the soil is holding onto water for too long, then your plant is at risk for root rot. If your bear's paw leaves are falling off at the slightest touch and are still plump, it's definitely being overwatered. Additionally, black spots may appear if root rot has started setting in. Succulents store extra water in their leaves, roots, and stems so they can survive the arid conditions of their native desert. Too much water overfills the plant's water storage tissue and causes it to bloat and explode. The black spots are a fungus that has developed in the damaged plant tissue. When the leaves at the bottom of the plant dry off and fall off, it does not necessarily mean that it's a watering issue. It may just need more sun or better drainage. In fact, it could just be the natural aging process of the plant. If you notice on this guy, see how this bottom leaf here is kind of a little bit more yellow, not quite looking as hot as the other ones. It's probably just a natural aging process. See so even here, this lower leaf, a little bit more yellow, not quite as full and upright as the other plants or other leaves rather. And if you fear that your plant is being overwatered, get it out of that soil. And I'll show you when I repot this one, we're gonna take out all of the soil. Oh, here's one, look, you can see this, see this mushy, that is a sign that this plant is being overwatered. You see that? It's like mushy and gross. This is from being overwatering. And I know it's being overwatered at the nursery because I can just tell by the soil. It's still really dark and the bottom of it is still wet. But we're gonna go ahead and remove this from the pot. We're gonna take off the excess soil around the roots and then put it in some really nice well draining soil and then hold off on watering. And I always wait a while before I water a plant that's been repotted because even if you're super careful, you can still damage some of the roots when you're transplanting it. And so you wanna give it time to let those roots heal and callus over as well. Another thing you wanna look for when repotting or if you notice your plants being overwatered is the quality of the roots. If they're slimy or mushy, that is root rot. You wanna snip off any of the dead or mushy roots and, and place it in some well-draining, grittier soil. Definitely wait to water until signs of lack of water appear. Now, like we discussed before, if you're getting a lot of dropped leaves, it's most likely a watering issue, but it can also be a pest issue. So just make sure that you inspect the plant. You know, the mealybugs especially, they hide in the little crevices and undersides of the leaves, so it's really important that you inspect your plant thoroughly to make sure there's no pests. And if your bare paw gets dirty, a lot of times when you repot, you can get some dirt on the leaves. You wanna use a small paintbrush or a little makeup brush to gently dust off any dirt that may have fallen onto the leaves. Now, if you notice that your plants are losing some of the fuzz or the hair, or they're not quite as fuzzy as they used to be, then that could be the sign of an issue. Now the little hairs are called trichomes and they're a modification of the plant's tissue. They act as a sunscreen, protecting the plant from harsh sunlight and reflecting it. The hair's main objective is to reduce transpiration or the loss of water through evaporation in arid environments and under full sun. This includes release of moisture and oxygen and uptake of carbon dioxide. Kind of like breathing for plants, but mostly at night for succulents. Given that, it could be that your bear's paw is not getting enough sunlight. If there's no harsh sun, then there's no need to grow fuzz. However, it may be that they're getting too much water and want to increase their transpiration. You may also have some stickiness to your leaves and Many of the pests that we covered earlier secrete a sap. They attack the plant's new growth and secrete a sticky substance called honeydew that attracts ants. This may explain the stickiness to some of your leaves. I'd recommend thoroughly checking your plants for pests regularly. Now, if you notice that your bear's paw leaves are staying round and aren't developing the little teeth on the ends, then it probably needs some more light. Now, of course, like we talked about earlier, the new leaves are gonna come in nice and round, and then as they mature and get stronger and larger, then they'll develop this cute little teeth on the edges. So if they're getting larger and they're not developing the teeth, make sure that you increase your light. Many succulent stems cork with age. They grow woodier and stronger. And if you notice on this particular plant, you'll see a lot more of a woodier stem as opposed to 
this plant where the leaves are kind of green but they're also pretty thin and they're not quite as strong and that's perfectly normal aging process for the stems it actually is making the plant stronger now bear's paws are poisonous to pets animals and to humans they're mildly toxic I've read some articles saying that they're not toxic, but this is actually not true. They actually are mildly toxic. So make sure you keep them away from your fur babies and other babies. Another issue with bear's paw is a, a brown scabbing, and this is caused by overwatering typically, and it's called edema. And it's basically the plant is taking up too much water, then the leaves can transpire. This excess water ruptures the cells and leads to water-soaked patches that scab, and they turn corky and brown. If you notice something is eating your bear's paw, it could be a caterpillar or a slug. So if you notice some bites taken out of your plant, make sure you inspect for some um, of those pests. And if you notice any mushrooms growing out of your soil, that is definitely an overwatering issue. So need to water less or swap out the soil for a grittier mix. If you have any questions that we didn't cover in this video regarding the cotyledon tomentosa, please leave them in the comments below. We hope you learned something new about the adorable bear's paw succulent. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, please give it a big thumbs up, and we hope to see you on the next video. Thanks for joining us on Moody Blooms.